welcome back to another one of my 52 frames journey. This week, it's one week, two challenges and a new location. Welcome to Singapore. After my not so successful panorama in Dubai, I took a huge gamble with the panorama challenge. I left it for Singapore, but since we only arrived on Saturday morning and it was a long night with little to no sleep, it left us with one and a half days to scout a location, decide on a location and then go out and shoot the photo. And boy did this gamble pay off. Of course I was going to take some photos while scouting and the gloomy weather made for some really cool desaturated or black and white photos. I even tried my hand at an in-camera double exposure. I knew I was going to run against time, so I did some homework back in Dubai already and that's how I came upon my first location and most of the photos you just saw was taken there. The reason I chose that particular spot is because I could see the big wheel, gardens by the bay, the marina bay sands which is the ship building, the art and science museum as well as the skyline all from that vantage point. But it was quite a mission to get there and a far walk and it would be difficult to go back the next night especially with me only having two nights with team. The next morning on our way to Gardens by the Bay and the Cloud Forest which we wanted to visit we had to cross the Helix Bridge and bingo I found my photo. It was in the middle of the day but I found the composition. The Helix Bridge has four viewing vantage points and I had to find the perfect one. The first one we crossed was too close to construction. Um, they're building there. I think I saw that they're building like a big sports arena and stuff. The last platform and the second from last platform was just too close. The buildings are too big. So that left me with the second platform which would be the perfect spot to take a photo. All I had to do is then go back during blue hour to capture my photo. So we scouted this uh, spot this morning, but our um, dinner ran a bit late. Our upper rolls and pizza ran a little bit late. So we're rushing to catch the blue hour. 
Luckily, I'll be grabbed as a grabber or grabber, grab, grab. and um, yeah, so we're on our way holding thumbs that I would get my pano. Okay, so I'm gonna um, do a exposure compensation in HDR. Not necessarily gonna use it, but it's always nice to have the bracket in. And then um, I'm struggling, let me just put on the HDR. Okay, and then I'm struggling a bit because if you see there, it's, the horizon is a bit skewed, but as you move along, it actually levels out, so I will see what it will do in post. Interestingly enough, behind me, they are waiting to see Saturn, so they've got huge as lenses there and a crowd waiting for that, which is quite interesting. Okay, as with my photo I tried to take in Dubai, I'm overlapping by a third, and this time I'm hoping it's a bit more balanced with some heavy weight there as well as there with the i think it's the museum that looks like an onion i call it the onion building um so yeah let's see my only concern is it is a bit darker on the little shippy side than it is towards the skyline but hopefully with my hdr bracketing i might be able to work around that Here's just a quick look at our visit to the cloud forest and some of the photos I took. It's as simple as it seems, the twinkle in your eyes, the way that time slows down when you kiss me. As we fall asleep in a bed of butterflies, just close your eyes and then you'll see it. You don't ever have to look too far. You don't have to cover up your scars You're perfect, darling, just the way you are So before you think to rip yourself apart Open up my heart and you'll find love Love, love, love mm -hmm. Love, love, love Open up my heart grow old even when we grow up it's up to us to stop and smell each rose they're the colors that we show it's the feeling that we trust and it's the brush that we both carry you don't ever have to look too far you don't have to cover up your scars you're perfect darling just the way you are so before you think to rip yourself apart Open up my heart and you'll find love, 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 mm -hmm. love, love, love. Open up my heart and you'll find love. When you're searching hard and it seems to lead to no. Open up my heart and you'll find me. You don't ever have to look too far You don't have to cover up your scars You're perfect darling just the way you are So before you think to rip yourself apart Open up my heart and you'll find me. Cloud Forest is only one part of Gardens by the Bay. 
and I got to explore a bit more on the outside while Tashis was working. Here I really took my time since I wanted to slow down and search for my next 52 frames photo which was on the ground. Okay, so I have found found this little like I'm not even sure if I'm really allowed here but you can see behind there there's like a deck and there was this little viewing point I would say that I decided to plonk myself down on and um because in front of me you can see there's so much water lilies and then there's a fountain I'll show it to you but it just now and then on here, while you sit, you don't see that much. But then, if you sit still long enough, you can see, I think it's like a jacona. I will look it up right on that cross pan. Around there is a little duck. And on that rock over there is two turtles, tortoise. I'm not sure, I have to look up which one, I always forget. And then in this lily pad here earlier on, I saw a little dragonfly as well. So actually a lot happening and I'm just sitting, waiting um, and photographing to see what I come up with. This week's challenge is um, on the ground and although it's technically on the water and not on the ground, I still think it qualifies since it's surface level. So who knows, maybe I come up with something. husband's despise most of the time I try to travel with as much lenses as possible I try to streamline it depending on where we go obviously but I do want to travel with most of them giving options this morning for instance I've used all of my lenses I just used my big 100 to 500 mil there for the little dragonflies and the ducks and stuff like that earlier on I had this bogan villa um, photo with the Bogan Villa in front with the I think what the should be buildings them I don't know the buildings them I just call them what I see with these metal trees which Singapore is known for in the background which and for that I use my wide angle lens then obviously my kit lens I almost always use if I have to take only one lens and I really really have to it's gonna be that one it's the most versatile one and then as uh, some people chased me from a spot, by the way, that's the spot I was talking about earlier, where I sat and I photographed the dragonfly. And as they chased me and I came here on this little bench to switch lenses and pack away my stuff, I noticed these little um, fungi. And oh, look at that little guy. Okay, hold on. Uh, he's like a little lizard thingy. You see, and now I use my macro lens for this, which is so cool. Oh, he's so good. I've actually seen quite a few of them, but now he's sitting on top of the sprinkler. It would be wicked if he would go sit next to the fungi, but I'll see. I'll camp out here a little while. Ironically enough, you won't believe me, but I'm right at the entrance and all the buses arrive right there. And that just goes to show you that you can get footage and photos in the most random places. Uh, yeah, so I'll probably camp out here, see if my little lizard would go and sit next to the fungi. Otherwise, just play around with that a little bit more. I'm using my phone's um, flashlight to create a little bit of backlight. There's a lot of reflection. 
but I want to create a bit of backlight for my mushrooms to give it a bit more of a dreamy feel. Okay, I think I'm gonna pack up. I've probably sat here about an hour, if not longer, with these little fungi and hoping for the lizard to appear in my photo. I even used one of those big ants on a little stick to see if I can, but I couldn't get that photo either. But my camera is busy overheating and I'm not far behind from it at the moment. So I think I'm gonna head to McDonald's to get myself a McFlurry. And then I can probably head back to the hotel because then Tasha's would be finished working and we can maybe go do something fun for the evening. most of my time in the Marina Bay area, which is this area, and I was absolutely obsessed with the esplanade and the texture of the roof. To be looking at the stars from my balcony, wondering about what the future will bring, oh, we'll have made it so far. Looking at each other and knowing I'm here at the, um, some kind of theatre, I'm not exactly sure, the Esplanade Theatre, I think it's called, and it's been raining this afternoon, so I thought I would come out, see if there's a few puddles where I can capture some um, photos, especially on the ground, reflection is always nice, cleared up, so I think it should be a nice sunset as well. So on my way here, I try to walk because you see more whilst walking and I see more opportunities. So right there, I saw a puddle there that I tried to take a photo of reflected. But as I wanted to leave, I saw this little guy there and it's got some um, raindrops on. So I'm on, so I'm using wide angle lens to um, to capture that but I've got two problems the one is focusing because if I focus on that the rest is too blurry even at a, a higher f-stop and um, the other problem is this is in shade so obviously dynamic range is quite bad um, so what I'm doing is I'm doing focus stacking so I'm taking about three photos at f11 I might even go down to f16 as well as HDR so that I can get everything clear and the dynamic range not as extreme. You'll do what you need. I'll sing me a song. We'll meet when we meet. Touch base and walk on. I'm kind of choked up right now. I really feel you can hear.
I've done a bit of scouting and photo pulls and I decided on this spot on this one pier um, hoping for the moon to come out. I weren't even exactly sure if it's gonna happen because it was overcast the entire day but it actually looks like it cleared up quite a bit. Now according to my calculation the moon should come up around about there somewhere and I'm hoping to get it in line with the viewing deck and with my 500 mil lens I then hopefully can get those little people up there with the uh, full super moon behind it that's what I'm hoping for uh, photo pills helps quite a lot but it's not always perfect the VR isn't always perfect so let's see if how close to perfect we just got. I'm just so amazed at how camera friendly this place is. I mean, in Dubai, this would never happen. At least the security coach would have tackled me by now. And even here, I'm on some deck, I think next to a hotel or a restaurant or something. I mean, that's unheard of. And nobody has approached me just yet. It might still happen, but there's somebody else with the tripod as well. So for now, I'm all good. And it's actually so refreshing to just focus on the photo and not be worried too much about security. So I hear a little security patrol in progress behind me. It's like a little robot man. So let's see if the robot will chase me. I can't, I don't know if you will be able to see it, but let's see if the security patrol in progress will come and chase me. Hopefully not. Security patrol in progress. Security patrol in progress. Nope, don't look like the little robot had a problem with me, which is quite cool. And there it's going again. So cool. Okay, so I've just spotted the moon. It started rising. It's behind the mall at this stage and halfway behind the uh, clouds. Like I said, it started rising, but it's behind the clouds at the moment. But it looks as if it might go into the direction I'm hoping for. Just wait a bit. I think. According to Photopol, it's going to be closer to an hour, but in the meanwhile, I'll see what I can capture. While we wait, let me quickly run you through a few of my settings that I use for the moon. I've photographed it a few times now before, and um, I've narrowed it down quite a bit. So my f-stop I make as low as possible with my 500 mil lens which I love to use because it makes the moon appear bigger that compression that I use so with my 500 mil that's f7.1 um, at maximum zoom then I um, try to keep my shutter speed at a 50th of a second usually um, that's fast and slow enough you can't really go slower than that because then your moon blurs due to the earth rotation the, it looks like the moon is moving although it's actually the earth so a 50th of the second is the slowest you can go for the moon photography and then I just use my ISO so this is one of the few times I actually rely on my ISO since my f-stop and my um, shutter speed is fixed I only use the ISO to control my exposure. So yes, let's see, now we just wait. Uh, it started rising, I'll take a few more videos of that and see how it goes, but beautiful night. Oh, it looks so romantic behind me. I can't believe I'm all on my own. I miss my travel buddy and photography buddy. He's busy at an event, but from tomorrow he's mine again for a little while.
while I'm waiting, I see, and let me just show you as I push the ISO, that there is some clouds. There is a gap and that's more or less where I would like the um, moon to be at. But uh, obviously clouds keep on moving, so not sure if I'm going to get it. I'm not going to be heartbroken if I don't get the shot because I didn't really plan weeks in advance. I started planning this yesterday, but um, pretty magical night nonetheless. So let's see. Okay, so behind me, not sure if you'll be able to see him. I'm going to try to make it as unintrusive as possible but was a guy and I heard he was talking umbrella like whatever and then once the moon was past the deck I went to him and oh yeah by the way I moved a little bit to the right to get the alignment right and he had a couple on top of the deck and with the moon in the background he shot them and the pictures actually came out really, really cool. It's this romantic feeling with the umbrella and this full moon behind them on top of the deck. It's absolutely amazing, really, really inspiring. So yeah, you never know when you'll meet somebody new and, um, and find new ideas and stuff. But yeah, he's busy. I think it's a couple he um, was working for, so I didn't want to bother him too much. But I was just curious. For those who want to know, he shot with the 800 mm lens. So yeah, it's a bit more zoomed in. And if I'm not mistaken, I think I saw a converter as well. But I don't, I'm not going to put money on that. It's just mostly, I saw that it's an 800 mm lens. And um, so the moon was even, looked even closer than it would on my photo. With me heading back to the hotel room, I saw that what I initially thought was a hotel was actually a public access hallway, pass through, whatever you want to call it. And it was absolutely jaw dropping and easy to see why I mistaked it for a hotel. I would like to add that I've done something amazing. I, right there is Singapore's Apple Store. And there's a bit underground, which is the tunnel, which is store as well. And then it goes up into that uh, globe, which is another part of its store. And once I got there, I saw that they've got the Apple Vision Pro. And I've never actually really seen it. And when looking at it, I said, can I try it on? They said, well, you have to book a demo for that. And um, yeah, so I booked the demo. It takes about uh, half an hour 
because they have to put in the size lenses because I'm wearing contacts and then set it up according to your face and then they give you a complete demo and it was absolutely a mind-boggling experience for anyone who hasn't experienced it yet and has the opportunity just go for the demo it will absolutely blow your mind and although I don't think I would like to buy one just yet I think there's just not enough media out there for it yet but the opportunities it creates is absolutely it blows your mind one of the things I could do in the demo is they give you a Formula 1 car a 3D model and you can actually take it apart so I think for design and architecture and stuff it's mind-blowing and then the travel footage being on a beach or on top of a mountain for people that can't really access it it's an absolute mind bender and it excites me on where it can go from there on Tarsus is currently busy there um, as soon as I've done mine I did mine while he was still working so he's busy uh, having his demo at the moment I'll see if I can sneak back and capture a bit of footage there but I just had to book him a session as well because it's such an amazing experience and nothing you can describe really comes through as what you see while wearing it. So if you ever got the opportunity, go ahead and do the demo. It will blow your mind. So what did I think of Singapore? Singapore is underrated in my mind. Yes, it's expensive, like everybody says, but so is Dubai. So for us living in Dubai, we're kind of used to the costs. Um, it feels like Dubai, just a lot uh, greener, so much more rain and so much more humidity. My tip for um, visiting Singapore, bring extra clothing. This is what this was the first time I felt like I packed two little clothes for a trip because I just kept changing. But other than that, it's absolutely beautiful. It's efficient. And the thing, and once again, coming from Dubai, that amazed me is they've got all of these communities. There's a parrot community and a dog community and you've got dancers. And in the underpass, there was a remote control drifting and get together as well as the photography last night i was shot the super moon from a deck which i was sure felt like private property and nobody batted an eye i had my tripod on everything nobody cared where if that was in dubai a security would have definitely tackled me so there's so much more to see i mostly um traveled in the bay area they call it the marina by the bay and um, <clears throat> so I can't really speak for other than this but Singapore really impressed me and I absolutely loved every single moment although like I said just super humid Singapore was a breath of fresh air for me getting outside of Dubai a little bit as well as for my photography it felt like my photography came alive again even with my 52 frames photos I haven't decided on my on the ground topic uh, photo yet 
Let's pause for a moment. Me in the future. So I decided to use the very creative of pedestrian crossing at the Esplanade. I told you I was obsessed with that place. And, um, but the panorama is obviously in. And I've just received a notice this morning that it was picked for one of the 52 picks. I try not to make too big of a fuss because it's not really a competition, but it does feel good once in a while to get recognition that somebody else thought you had a nice photo. So besides that, my photos just, I got excited about photography again. But I'm back in Dubai next week for a little while. I think we've got about a bit more than a month and then we're heading to Japan. So uh, hopefully there's a little bit more of traveling 52 frames coming soon. Future me needs to pause my past me again because the heat must have gotten to me. Because I really want to thank Tashis for taking me along being there, enjoying everything with me and being my best friend, travel buddy and just amazing hubby. Thank you for tagging along and as always, thank you for the footage you took that I could use in this video. Okay, back to past me. Thank you for watching and catch you in the next one.